All right, good morning, beautiful people. So uh, today's Monday, or well, we're shooting this on a Monday. You probably won't come out for a couple weeks, but a lot of people have been hitting me up with the question of a lot of videographers, people who are getting into the visual arts, who are just picking up a camera and saying, how can I actually make money from this? How can I actually get clients? How can I make a living and take this side hustle into actual careers? So instead of just me giving my thoughts and my opinions, my feedback on it, I thought the best way to do that would be to have a conversation about it with somebody that I've known for over 15 years, who's actually a beast at his craft. So let's go ahead and just get into it. What's going on everybody? This is Shy Harris of the Rebel Society. And uh, today I'm kind of, I'm sitting down with a guy that I've known for over 15 years. Yeah, and 15, yeah. Almost 20, probably. 1999. Yeah. 20 years. School. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I tell everybody like that this guy right here was actually like when I first moved to Suffolk, I switched schools from one city to another. <laughs> this guy was literally like my first friend. Like ninth grade, I ain't had too many friends. Yeah. And I remember like we used to all sit together at lunch. I like, yo, yeah. this is the only guy I really know for real. So, yeah. so this is my man Will Freeman. What's up? Of uh, Pro Look Media. Yeah. How you doing today, brother? I'm good, man. Right, cool cool yeah. so so for the people that don't know you that should know you what do you do or what's your 60 second origin story of you know who you are what you do um man my name is will i'm just a man just a creative um i'm into the arts i was into um art music anything dealing with anything being creative that's what you know i was into especially like from a young age and so uh I thought I wanted to be an uh, animator when I was in high school, decided not to do that, decided to pursue music, and especially music production. I was really high, uh, really into music production, producing beats, working in the studio. I did that, but then part of my degree was actually uh, dealing with media, and so uh, I decided to go the media route where I was still able to take advantage of you know, creative skills as far as like uh, working with video, um, doing web design, graphic design, and so started a company in 2011 called Prolook Media. We did web design, logos, videos, and then like in 2015, I decided to just focus on the video. I tended to like that more, and I was, you know, I, I felt like that was really where um, I thrived at is just creating stories, man, so. Okay, okay. All right, cool. So, um... I guess we can go ahead and just hop into like the main question. Yeah. So I said before that a lot of people have recently hit me up and just say, you know, they just picked up a camera and like, you know, how can they get clients or how can they actually, you know, make a name for themselves, especially just starting out. I want to just have that conversation with you because when I first started out, you were like one of the people that I reached out to and like, you know, how can I actually take this seriously? How yeah. can I actually make a living doing video work? So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? The first thing is, People have to know that you do it. Um, I think that's the first piece is like, um, or if people don't know that you do it, you have to do something so that people will know that that's what you do. So it could be something as simple as uh, filming a family reunion, you know, retelling that event. Um, mm -hmm. It could be, you know, just taking on a, a project where you may not get paid for it, but you do it and then you showcase it and, you know, you track your time, you see how much time it took you. You know to do it you look at you know what you messed up on you get other people to critique your work and then you know you see if that's something that you can offer people as a service and, mm. and um and then you ask people hey you know how much would you pay for this that mm. type of thing and then you start to see like okay could this be something that i could turn into a business will this replace my full-time job right, right. i still have some work to do do i still need to you know what i what i would consider like research and develop you know as a a video um, director slash editor um, do I need to grow in that before you know I decided to uh, open it up to a broader audience and mm -hmm. try to uh, make more money so okay yeah. what are your thoughts on working for free because and the reason I asked that is because with me and like pretty much how I've kind of grown my business is I've done a lot of free work yeah. but I feel like I did it very strategically where before, like when I first started out, I was doing like interviews like this and that actually got me in front of people who I know, I know that they needed video work. So that was my way of kind of like networking. I use, you know, yeah. sometimes I use these videos as like a networking tool to get yeah. in front of people who I feel like I could do, you know, some work with. 
Yeah. And then it kind of translate like last year I did 10 free videos for different companies and then that brought like all the work that I'm getting right now. Yeah. So like what are your thoughts on just free work? If you have the time, you know, mm -hmm. I, I would say you, you're right. You have to be strategic about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. And so when you start talking about income, you know, and you know, you don't want to be stressed out, <laughs> you know, right. um, put yourself in stressful si situations or in situations where you regret working with the individuals. Uh, definitely. That's know, the worst thing. Know, That's you, the worst thing. You got to know what you plan on getting out of this situation. Mm -hmm. when you decide that you're going to do it for free. It has to be a, you know, it has to be a win-win situation. Right, right, um, right. And it's, and it can't be one-sided. It can't be like, I'm doing this for you and then you're telling me everything that you want done you say no here's the scope of what it is I'm gonna do mm -hmm. um, I can do this for free anything beyond that you, you gotta, pay, gotta pay me yeah, yeah yeah I think you have to have those boundaries on when you start offering things for free um, but then also I would say even in a situation where you do it for free give the person an invoice and show them what it actually costs for you to do the job and um, and then discount like show them the discount that you're getting, yeah, yeah. you know, so that they will know like, okay, this is not actually free or this is not actually whatever the amount is you charge it. It's actually this amount. You just discounted it. And you know, that's something I just learned about. Yeah. Like before I was just given like, like I would, wouldn't even do it. If it's free, I wouldn't even send out an invoice, but now I'm like, yeah. You need to see the value that absolutely, this actually, yeah, this value absolutely. that this service has. So I think, yeah, definitely educating them. And, but then too, that could be a service for your clients because you're educating them on the process. So mm -hmm. it could be the simple fact that maybe they were interested in video, but you took the time to almost demo, you know, right, right, right. demo your process. And then from that, they may see it's like, oh, you know what? They may be able to give you feedback and say you need to um, improve on this, you need to improve on that, and then that helps you to be better. Mm -hmm. You know, like what did you like about my process? Um, mm -hmm. You know, the whole client experience because now you're an entrepreneur. It's not that you just do this one thing. It's like no, from the phone calls, communication, all the way down through. Like, did you walk with your client through the whole process of delivering their end product? And so um, that's a part of that whole picture that you have to account for as well. It's like the phone calls you know it, the emails mm -hmm. you know that's a part of that service that you're providing right so. so what were some things that you were actually doing when you first started out to start out in video to you know kind of get your name out there or get more clients um for me it was uh so i guess i would i would say man like just understanding that no one's gonna come um like calling you right i think i had just been in a position where it was just like man like 2008 you know like the recession hit mm -hmm. you know and then plus during that time frame i was selling cars i was selling cars at um hall nissan on um, western branch and so mm -hmm. part of it was like man just having sales experience knowing that like no one is going to come into this dealership looking for you you got to mm -hmm. actually call people and reach out to people go out there gotta, yeah and show so, your face you know so that kind of helped me understand that i have to be proactive and so part of it was as an entrepreneur you got to look for opportunities that aren't there right and so it's like and i think sometimes I you got to create your own opportunities absolutely yeah. so that's part of it is like creating your opportunity like creating the opportunity that didn't exist right right um, so like i just finished reading something about elon musk as far as like starting spacex and it's just like he wanted to buy a spaceship and he was like spaceship is like 65 million dollars or something like that something I forget it was a ridiculous amount of money mm -hmm. and it was like well instead of buying it I might as well just go and get all the materials you know right and, and then build it myself is gonna cost less money and right you know so it's just like just seeing an opportunity um, or creating an opportunity for you know now he got man like I forget like how much money he gets like just to fund like those <laughs> rides and stuff like yeah, that. It's yeah ridiculous man but you know, you know, being able to be a visionary for your company and the direction where you want to go, and um, and trying to forge relationships with people that are on the same page, I think that's really, really key. So, 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 matter of fact, another question, or I feel like people always talk about that, it's about the equipment that you have, especially starting out. So a lot of people yeah. like feel handicapped because they don't feel like they have the equipment. So what do you feel like is the essential, maybe a couple pieces of equipment that you feel like all videographers mm -hmm. need, even just starting out? Like to me, I feel like you need 
first you need a, a, a good camera that can at least give you, you know, 60, you know, frames per second. Um, you need something for audio. Um, you you need a, you know, your, your basic, maybe your, your workhorse lens, a zoom lens, yeah. but maybe like one, like, like I had like a, a nifty 50, you know, yeah, joint. Yeah. Like I use that for low light if I'm yeah. like at a party or something like that. And then maybe something for lights. Man, dude, the way that technology is, is like you could really get a good quality image. Um, and then when you realize like you're uploading to YouTube or mm -hmm. online, it's like the stuff is being compressed. Right. Unless you just have to, unless like if you're starting off, you're, you're not going to be delivering videos to, for like, you know, a movie theater or something like that. Unless you just start off and you start doing that. Right. But uh, there's different specs for the different um the different channels in which you have to upload your content to or mm -hmm. deliver your content to so um so really man like i started off i started off with a t3i mm -hmm. and i feel like everybody uh, pretty much starts off with something like that yeah started off with a t3i and then um but i knew i had to get good glass so i didn't even i, I started off yeah the nifty 50 like the one that was like like a hundred bucks or something yep, like that yep. i had that and then you know the the focus on that was terrible uh, pretty because it's super was trash yeah yep. mm -hmm. and then um and then i once i saw that i was like okay it was always like man how much money should i be investing into equipment and so i would say on the front end like for me i got super consumed with quality and and um well i was still being creative but i think that if you have something that works is understanding its limitations so if you get a 100 dollar you know 50 mil millimeter lens like work it you know if you get a t3i now i think they have what like a t7i or something mm, okay. t, i don't know what they got out in, in that as far as that but whatever they have now is just like you get it understand its limitations and maximize it um and and then if in and then compensate for it because the sensors are good. Honestly, the sensors are good. The codex for the, how it films now is mm -hmm. way better. So you don't really have to have too much. And then, like you said, audio definitely. You know, you got the uh, the microphone on the camera with the uh, with the uh, the dead cat. So it's like mm -hmm. you know having a microphone that's gonna give you something better than whatever's on the actual camera. Yeah, good. Like gonna... Good quality makes or breaks video. Yeah. I found out. Like before I used to have like the trash as audio. And then I realized that, you know, I need at least the yeah. good audio to especially you gotta get closer to your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. gotta have the shotgun where it's counseling out everything and Right. So I guess one last question is, um, I guess as we wrap this up, what do you feel like starting out the one thing a videographer should be focusing on? Uh I would say, um, the it should focus on the client. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, I think sometimes it could be um, one sided, where it's just like, what am I gonna get? Yeah, out of, you know, this transaction, and you could lose sight that the person that really matters is the client at right. the end of the day. And so, um, what I've been focusing on is finding um, just the client experience, understanding the client's journey, mm -hmm. you know, um, onboarding them, you know, as far as being a client, you know, helping them to understand things, helping them to uh, set clear expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you can, I think part of even learning is after you, um, it's almost like the last phase of learning is being able to, um, it's like the rhetoric, being able to speak it, being mm -hmm. able to articulate it, right. you know, whatever the concept is, being able to show someone or teach someone. And mm -hmm. so, Part of that is just getting better at articulating what it is that we do, right. and and that is where honestly, um, if you can't articulate it, that's just the soft skills. So yeah, if you got yeah. hard skills, you could do video. What's going to set you apart is how you communicate with your client. True, and, and that's going to be the piece where you could be the most talented video producer, but if you have bad communication skills like your client is going to suffer at the end of the day right right yeah. so as we wrap this up uh, where can we where can we find you at man? Uh, man so Prolook everything's at Prolook Media on Instagram on Facebook um, and the website ProlookMedia.com you can check out the work uh, man like there's you know you can check it out um, man I'm not trying to say I'm the best but at the same time it's just like man like everybody has their lane mm -hmm. and so what we do is you know our whole tagline is you know become visually verbal it's like man just like ultimately like 
show don't tell. Right, so, right. like, you know, you don't want to create a video of someone just sitting and telling you. You want to actually create videos of just, like, what does the ultimate message say about your company or the services that you provide. So we just try to illustrate it and not tell people. So, gotcha. So, yeah, man. All right, cool, cool, cool. So I definitely appreciate Will for doing this. And, you know. Appreciate I, you. Yeah, and as I do all the videos, I just want to take it, you know. You know, get real close to the people right now. So, <laughs> so definitely appreciate y'all for watching this. Um, like I said, I want to give you know just value with just talking with different people I know who are dope, who are doing some great things, and really just giving their insight on issues that a lot of creatives, entrepreneurs, and just creative entrepreneurs are going through. So, once again, this is Shad, and uh, y'all have a great day. <laughs>